Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to episode two of the Mind Heist podcast. This week we talk about role models, growing up with and without them, social media influencers as role models, as well as learning from different people from different parts of the world, different religions, whether they're Muslim or not, and you know how you should navigate that whole thing. So I hope you enjoy and uh, see you at the end of the episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to Mind Heist episode two. With myself, Amin, and Achi Tweet. Um, bro, welcome. Um, let's get into, before we get into the main topic today, let's give, give, give us a three minute bio of yourself so we know where you're coming from when you say all this stuff that you're saying. All this controversial stuff, yeah? Whatever it is, because it's not <laughs> controversial today, yeah? Oh, okay. No. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to be passive for the first few episodes and then. Maybe by episode ten, we'll unleash all the uh, the controversy. Yeah. Get get the word going. Yeah. Uh, about me. Uh, okay. Well, my name is actually Muhammad. Okay. I am. I, I often forget my age, because anyway, that's that's another cool fact. No, I'm 24. I am a husband and a father. I am a brother to three sisters. And uh, I am of North African heritage. I'm half Moroccan, half Tunisian from my parents' side. And born and raised in the UK. Although I did spend some time abroad as well, like quite a few years abroad. How okay. are you, I mean? Uh, so, wait, just before we get into me, give us one thing that people that follow you on Twitter from day one that they wouldn't know about you. Wow, caught me off guard. I mean, Dude. isn't your isn't your age a secret on Twitter? No, no. If anyone okay. asked me, I'd let them know. Oh, um, right. okay. I don't know, man. Uh, what would then they know? I'm very open about everything. Mm. Mm. I'm lactose intolerant. How about that? Oh, okay, there you go. That's something <laughs> <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> Actually, what? Wait, I just realised that means you can't put loads of milk in your coffee. That's why I'm straight black coffee, man. I can't have, like, basically, for a long time, I always had, like, uh, like stomach issues, but I didn't know what it was. Mm. And then I came across lactose intolerance on the internet and thought, oh, this could be what I have. So I cut out milk, and I'd never been better. Oh. <laughs> How about you, Ak? Myself? Yeah. I'm... When I lack lactose, then I become intolerant. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, myself. Um, so, myself. I've lived in, uh, what is it? Three countries, five cities. I'm 20-something. I don't really want to go specific on that. I'm Algerian. Um, what else? Uh, I don't know. I, st I, I spent four years of my adult life in the UK. That's about it. Really? Uh, yeah. And uh, I think that's about it for now, man. Oh, we'll delve in deeper. Don't yeah, worry, we guys. will. I'm we will, no doubt. Out, I'm going to squeeze out way more out of their mean. Inshallah. Everybody's curious. Yeah. So, so, bro, to get into today's topic. By the way, guys, um, uh, Muhammad doesn't know today's topic. So he's going to find out as we go on. My first question to kind of dip our toes into this is when you were a kid... Yeah. What did you want to be? Or who did oh. you want to be like? Oh, God. That's a brilliant, brilliant question to ask me mm. because uh, that was my biggest problem as a kid. I didn't have that. I didn't have anyone I'd say that I wanted to emulate or... Not even like something casual, like I want to be a don't know, doctor or whatever. No, and, it, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a running problem that I've had all, all mm. through my upbringing. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So, so you, you just literally no answer, yeah? Not that I can think of, no. Mm, okay, that's interesting. I remember wanting to be um, a fireman. Oh, wow. I think that was purely because I used to watch Fireman Sam. I used to watch Postman Pat, but I never wanted yeah. to be a postman. Yeah, he wasn't the coolest guy, though, to be honest, was he? Yeah, but he had manners. He was well-respectable, you know? Yeah, yeah. True. It says a lot about me, doesn't it? 
<laughs> well, you just want to be like a standard guy. Is that oh, it? No, no, you can, you can, you can assume what you want. I'm just saying. Right. Oh, I need to put my phone on silent. Um, yeah. So today's topic is role models. Oh. Right. That's not controversial. I mean, I don't think so. Um, so yeah. So when when was it? So you're saying that was an ongoing problem for you, like you, you like and what until you were 15, 16, 20, you still didn't have anyone that you I kind think, of. So when it comes to like um, emulating what you want to be in terms of a profession, I didn't really have any idea what I wanted to do until like my um, my teens. When I was mm. a teenager, but the thing is, what I wanted to do wasn't necessarily what my my father thought was best for me. So, and because I, I did listen to him a lot, I shut down that avenue straight away. Like the moment I sort of wish, you know, I was told that isn't going to serve you well in your future, then yeah. I didn't, I didn't really pursue it. Well, low well, Adam. So, so you followed, you followed your dad or you didn't follow your dad? You rebelled? Oh, I followed, I followed my dad. No. Oh, right. Okay. I followed my dad, but there was a rebellion in terms of my hobbies and my, my personal life. Yeah. But, in, but in terms of like what to do academically yeah then i did follow him to up mm. to a certain point yeah yeah what kind of influences led you to there yani to where i am now i mean to that point like like you listen to your dad okay yeah. like not everyone does that so like yeah, why but, uh, because basically my father pretty much asked me what i wanted to be what i wanted to do right what age is this and this this could be, I'd say GCSEs. So mm. when you're about to choose your GCSEs, which is about fifteen, isn't it? Fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, it must be around that age. But because, like I said, that the, um, the ongoing issue is that I never knew what I wanted to be. And then, when he came and asked me on the fateful day, "What is it that you want to do?" I didn't have an answer for him. So mm. as a father, which I which I see now, because back then I didn't. Back then it was a, a lot of friction between us. But as a father myself now, I see why he came at the angle he did. He, he said, well, if you don't know what to do, then I'm going to suggest what's best for you. And as a typical, you know, Arab dad, he suggested that I pursue medicine. Mm. And uh, he did say, though, he did say, like, if you can't handle it, then do something more practical with your hands, like uh, vocational, you know, like electrician or plumbing or something like that. Mm. But because I had no interest in any of that, I sort of just, with a lot of resistance as well, like I resisted a lot, but I did actually follow it because I didn't have a reply. When he said, well, so what else are you gonna do? I didn't know what I wanted to do. So yeah. that was it really, but yeah. He sounds pretty reasonable compared to a lot of people. I think a lot of people listening are gonna be like, yeah, that's pretty reasonable. So that's yeah, okay. In the, in the time, at the time, it isn't to you. At the time, as a rebellious little teenager, who's, you know, all you care about is your friends and going out and, and socializing. Yeah, fun. Yeah, and having fun, like all of that doesn't concern, well, it didn't concern me. I can't speak for the rest of the world. Yeah. It didn't concern me. What about mm. you? Um, I mean, this is the thing. I rebelled against my dad when I was around that age, I guess, like 14, 15, 16. Yeah. But like, I had to respect him in the end. Like, So if he was to suggest something in a serious manner, like I'm going to just end up doing that. But the thing is, my dad's very open-minded, so he never pushed me down any route. He just was like, you know, take life seriously. And like, he definitely wanted me to go uni and like study something and become good at something and yeah. qualified. But he, I don't think he ever told me what to study ever. Really? Um, yeah. But, but, um, but the thing is, bro, I want to take it back a little bit because we're going down the kind of careers route. But yeah. that wasn't my uh, intention for the, the topic fully obviously career is going to be one thing right because the people around you that you respect if they do a certain career you might want to be like those people right like the the animals right but there are other influences that are going to like d like influence your development as a person right so yeah. oh that guy he wakes up at Fajr and stays awake. So I want to be like that. That guy yeah. memorized the Quran. That guy, uh, I don't know, he could do a backflip, like whatever it is, yeah? Um, yeah. These are these are different kind of things. It's not just, because, you know, as, as we grow up, we're going to develop not just in our, our, like, studies and our career or whatever. We're going to develop in our character and stuff, you know? Mm. So what about when you were younger, 
was the nothing like there was was it purely your friends who were like influencing you in terms of your hobbies or and stuff like mm. that well like i um uh, as as 24 years old i'd have to divide my life into like two parts and there's especially when it comes to my from being a teenager onwards like you've got a like uh, people there's people that listen to this that are practicing and not practicing and i think when you do practice your whole life changes or at least when you do start to identify yourself as muslim and you want to follow a path that is islamic your perspective over these role models that you have in your life changes so before i was i'd say i was practicing my role models were like you know artists music artists and and do you understand P- okay. people like that people yeah. with with some but not out of the money it was never yeah. out of the money they had but it was the creativity that i admired really so i had yeah i admired like the art that they would be able to produce and the music they would ever you know the skill that they had yeah it, i had never really got into money until my late teens when um i guess the the groups of people i hung around with changed so before like early in my life i was very influenced by like sort of uh maybe alternative rock kind of personalities okay like what, not, what, not, what kind of traits did they like would you were you encouraged in, to in, in all honesty yeah. it was just like uh art really was just art like art that could be produced that wasn't like anybody else so it wasn't like, a bad did, thing yeah i guess yeah it depends what art though i mean in terms of art you know that has nothing but positive vibes fair enough but there's also like art in terms of music that is very negative and i was very influenced by negative music really you know uh, yeah not okay. ju- just not just music that was you know no no you wouldn't really rarely find tracks on my you know phone that were uplifting and oh is it like that kind of thing yeah yeah but not like not stereotypically like oh i want to hurt myself nothing like that right. it was just very emotive and very nostalgic just admired, kind of yeah exactly yeah. and i used to admire that creativity right um well that's a good thing though i think yeah i've turned it into a good thing now i think yeah yeah i think i think you can get good influence from maybe bad people i mean i'm not saying those people are bad people i don't know them but obviously their whole life is based around something that's hot arm right however yeah. like you're saying they're creative and stuff and if they made you um kind of if, you, if they made being creative seem cool to you then maybe mm. that's why you're doing the podcast now yeah i mean i'd say that a lot of my artistic inspiration so like things like uh, if I go back again to pure XI, like that kind of creative style comes from that history. Of, yeah. Like all, all the skills of, you know, creating things and art and, and mm. piecing things together uh, all comes from that. Like I didn't learn that when I was, when I started practicing, I learned that way before I abandoned it when I initially started practicing, because I think when you start practicing, you sort of wipe the slate clean and you think I want to emulate you know the prophet uh, Sartre, the so. prophet yeah prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the the companions and i want to uh, you know uh, emulate the good people that i see at the masjid and the the the, the shuyukh that i listen to and things yeah. like that um so tell me about this clean slate thing cuz i don't really know about that uh I, so i think what happened when i started practicing i really did wipe away essentially everything bro like uh everything that i used to do even like i'm not saying things that are haram because well yeah obviously things that are haram but i meant things that are halal i also wiped away as well really? in the sense yeah yeah like it, it, it's just it was, it was weird i think because i busied myself with knowledge right and i'm not talking like deep knowledge i'm talking about like the basics because i didn't know the basics yeah but the basics really like amazed me so much that that was all i was doing every day i was either at uni because i think yeah i literally just started uni i was in between college and uni when i started practicing I, I was doing all my work at uni and then any chance i could get like even the oh yeah even at college like on my break times i wasn't hanging out with anyone i was like in the computer room on wikipedia like searching like comparative religion and searching like uh you know the story of noah and uh, yeah. alayhi salam and the story so you became of the kind of obsessed with it yeah I, I became very obsessed because i just felt like this is a door to something that 
has been closed all my life and I've finally decided to open it. And even the most basic of knowledge to us now, like amazed me at that mm. time. Right. And But the interesting thing is you threw everything else out the window, is it? I threw it, but maybe not consciously, maybe because I busied myself so much. Oh, right, because like, you're like, obsessed. Okay, oh. Yeah, maybe I, I used to, you know, I, I, I play video games now. I used to play video games way more when I was younger. But yeah. when th that like period of when I started practicing, yeah, I sold all my stuff. Oh. Like, and, and if anybody who knows me knows that that's, that's a big deal because <laughs> it sounds just like nuts. what? Yeah, but it's one of my one like number one hobbies. Yeah, yeah, know? that's nuts. And, Wait, so I, is this common, by the way? Like, like I know a lot, like everyone in the UK, they always talk about in Jahiliya this, in Jahiliya that, yeah? When people mm. leave that, what they call their Jahiliya, yeah? Do yeah. they all do what you're talking about? Mm, I don't know. I think people, there's this like rubber band effect. And in terms, what I, what I observe is maybe what, what has happened to me in the sense that you initially start with a zeal. Yeah. And maybe there's some anger mixed up with that because... Mm. You're like, if I get it, why doesn't anyone else? Forgetting that you just spent 18 years of your life also in the same boat that everyone else is on. Right. Do you understand? Yeah. And then, um, so, but then you, you get to a point where that zeal and that maybe excessiveness, sometimes it can even fall into extremism in terms of you trying to, to bring everyone else on the same boat that you're on, mm. you know, and you forget your manners and you forget your patience, you become very impatient. Well, I'm speaking for myself, but maybe some people can see this in themselves when they start practicing. And, and, and you lack sympathy for the, the journey that other people are taking hmm. because you forget that it took you, like I said, however many years for you to reach the point. You forget how to talk to people. And then like you realize some point down the line that your approach needs to change. You realize some point down the line that maybe not everything you were doing was haram or impermissible and actually there are a lot of good things that you can bring into your you know yeah. into your life for example a lot of people that like let's let's look at reverts yeah people okay. that revert to islam often they wipe away the whole culture like their british culture or italian culture or french culture they yeah. wipe it clean and become essentially arab or you know Pakistani or whatever, do you understand? Yes. They, they they adopt the culture of who the Muslims that are around them. When yeah. really, there are a lot of elements of culture that don't have to be wiped around, that can be incorporated. And yeah. I think there are a lot of Muslims that go down that line, but then they realize that actually, you know what? Yeah, I do like my, you know, this, this element of my British culture. I struggle trying to identify British culture because I'm not, I wouldn't class myself as, you know, that, but... Uh, do you understand what I'm trying to say? I'm just yeah. trying to explain it, yeah. No, no, I so, get you fully, I get yeah. you fully. But I, I've got a question for you then. So in this time, this transition phase, if you like, uh -huh. uh, like you said before, you had some kind of role models, at least for the creative side of your life, yeah? Oh, yeah. Then in this transition phase, did you have any real role models because or, or people you're trying to emulate or whatever? Because it seems like you were kind of on your own, going through this transition on your own. Yeah. You got snippets from like whatever you're reading or watching. Yeah. But I don't know, it's like, because it, it takes in the end, yeah, it takes a few months to know someone, to mm -hmm. even know um, that you want to be like them, okay? Yeah. Whether, whether it's in real life or it's just reading about their life, it takes time, right? So in this transition phase, was there anyone or any kind of traits that you thought, I have to be like that? Yeah, there were, there was some, so I've, I did a video once on um, Roadside to Islam about like how I started practicing. And if anyone wants to watch that, they can. Um, on YouTube. Yeah, it's just put Aki Tweet and Roadside to Islam and it should come up. Um, and in that, I mentioned how I had come across in the newspaper. This is before I was practicing. In the newspaper, the EDL had come to Brighton where I live to do a protest. Yeah. And I identified as Muslim, but I didn't hang around Muslims. I didn't really know any, but I felt like this. Sort, and, I, and it came at a time when I was feeling very lost in terms of the people I was hanging around with, because I would I was bouncing from group to group of non-Muslims who were doing things I couldn't do or mm. didn't do or didn't want to do, like whether it was alcohol or drugs or women or do you understand? Like it was just every group had an arena of sin that I didn't feel comfortable being around. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I saw this. I felt 
marginalized by this protest and i thought well i'm in the area anyway let me walk past and see what what you know i've never seen anything like this let me see what it is so your identity triggered you yeah my muslim identity sort of triggered me because that's sick that that's an important point because a lot of the time uh people will throw like you know what it is yeah you're you're from Morocco, whatever. You know Tunisia better than Morocco, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, actually, maybe Tunisia is not a good example. You tell me, anyway. Tunisian, yeah. If yeah. a Tunisian guy he doesn't pray nothing, yeah, mm. but you tell him I'll oh, become Christian, how would he react? Yeah, 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 the, the, yeah exactly. Same thing. His identity would he, like would he'll feel... smash his alcohol bottle on your head. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so would. yeah, that's what it's like in Algeria as well. So people say culture's rubbish, culture. But culture, man, that like what you're talking about, this trigger thing of EDL, they're against me. It, it can make you take that interest and get you back into Honestly. the into the thing. Into I mean, the, the irony the irony is, if it wasn't for Tommy Robinson, I wouldn't be a practicing Muslim today. Like, of course, that's the yeah, irony. I mean, like, yeah, I'm, he triggered it. I mean, Allah, 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 you, but... Allah is above that. But I'm saying the irony for him is yeah. that. His protesting, his group's protest, led yeah. me to be proud of who I was. So Allah used him to bring yeah. you to where he didn't want you to go. <laughs> because, yeah, to add more to the story, I went to that. I went, I didn't go to protest, but I went to see what was happening. And obviously there was like a small group of EDL and a huge group of anti, like those who were against them. And a lot of them weren't Muslim. The majority of them were just you know, liberal, non-Muslim people that hate fascists and racists, you know? Right. But among that crowd, there was a group of Muslims, young Muslims, maybe my age, and one of them had come through the crowd and he was wearing a white thobe, uh, like, and I've never seen anyone wear a thobe in the UK before. You yeah, remember, well, uh... Yeah, I got, you got to remember, I live in the UK, like, unless it was Eid, I'd never yeah. seen, yeah. So, I, you know, living in Brighton, not like London or Birmingham or somewhere, it's a very abnormal. But then, to see him dressed like that, my age, yeah. and with pride, that like really sparked. And then when when they, when the crowd dispersed and everything, I was like, oh, that guy's kind of interesting. Like, I wouldn't mind getting to know him. And he He's just, my hero. I don't. Yeah, I don't know how he. I don't know how he spotted me. I didn't speak to anyone. He just came, grabbed me. He's like, oh, act. You want to go to the masjid? And I'd never been to a masjid before. Like, I don't. Right. I don't think I'd ever been. Like that I can remember. Maybe when I was young, my family took me to the aid solid and things like that but so i was very nervous in that but that really was the that's one of the episode. moments where you found someone that you thought hey yeah. that guy seems to be doing something good yeah. and from for for a long time that brother there was the one i emulated mm, okay so you were emulating like not some big shot you're no. emulating just a guy that happened like you could relate to him and yeah. he's 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 more uh, acting more like a Muslim than you, if you like. Yeah, and I think because a lot of people have an image in their head of practicing Muslims as very um, timid and very quiet and maybe very, you know, unrelatable. Right. Um, but this brother, just like any other brother who's really practicing, uh, was literally just talking the way I'm talking to you now. You know, right. maybe yeah. a bit more slang, a bit more street smart. You know, he was a revert and that it just amazed me, you know, and I was just like, well, this guy is normal. Like, do you mm. understand? This guy is essentially a normal guy who is proud of who he is and proud of his religion. Mm. Yeah, that very was, interesting. That was yeah. And then since then, where have you gone in terms of because maybe I'll share about my side of things is that uh, I don't have really that kind of experience. I, I got maybe more of a traditional experience where you grow up and you hear names and you're basically told by your parents or your family like this is a great person be like this person yeah mm. like uh if you're algerian like no doubt like algeria is known as the country of a million martyrs yeah like mm. all those like look if you're algerian yeah, you can't escape the idea of martyrdom and the idea oh, of yeah. independence and the idea of uh, you know fighting off colonizers all that stuff yeah so automatically if you're algerian yeah you're gonna you're going to have this revolutionary kind of, I don't know, dignity kind of thing built into you, yeah? And we've got heroes, Yanni, from the War of Independence. So oh, automatically, yeah. those people are going to be uh, told to you. Then there is, um, I mean, there, there are people I can't really mention here, but, you know, there's just these figures, isn't it? And that's kind of what I was raised with. Uh, on top of, Yanni, the Prophet, Salam, 
uh, a lot of that was uh, I learned about that when I was young. Not too much detail, right? Not it's not like I'm doing mad classes or anything like that. But I just knew that you're supposed to follow the prophet, um, and so that influenced me. Um, I learned a bit of the sirah here and there. Um, um, when I was in school, I did Islamic studies, so I learned stuff there. And this was um, in Algeria. No, no, no. This was here in UAE. Okay. When I was in school here. Oh, okay. um, I didn't reveal that about myself, but I will. So, yeah, in UAE. Um, so I was in we school. Should, yeah. We should also say, sorry, that we're not in the same room. We're not together. <laughs> uh, people were asking me last week, oh, um, you know, can I come and, you know, do right. a show with you guys one day? I was like, yeah, if you've got Skype and a mic. He's like, no, no, I can come around. I was like, yeah, well, it was, you know, I mean, it isn't actually with me. He's in the UAE and we're, we're using the powers of technology to uh, bring this to you right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, continue. Uh, yeah, so um, so basically I just had what I would call uh, standard Islamic role models in that sense. I didn't know too much about the great scholars that this Ummah has uh, in terms of what I might know now, what I might like read now. Like, uh, I don't know, next to me I've got, what's it called? Arba'in Nawawiya. Hmm. Like I'm, I'm just learning more and more about uh, Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah, right now, and the guy is, uh, pfft, the guy is a genius, yani. He, 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 I'll give you an example. Yeah, Th these are types of things that when, when I read them, I spe like uh, in my more adult life, yeah, like twenty and above, I learned more about these scholars, and that gave me ambition to be like them not necessarily to be a scholar but to get the the traits of them so for example yeah. imam al uh he's from uh, an noah which is in uh, south of syria he uh when he was 18 he went to uh, damascus to study okay and he did six years uh, where he was studying in like a kind of a university there um and he said th this is what he said and people that knew him confirmed this that the first two years he never lay down to sleep. Yeah, he used to like he'll be he'll be in his uh, room or his house or whatever, and he'll be like writing or reading, and he'll just fall asleep like at his chair or whatever, or sitting on the floor. Yeah, he'll fall asleep, he get like a power nap, and then he's up again. Yeah, and like that's just nuts. Okay, so I um what I take from that personally is that th there's, there's not enough time in life. Yeah, like. Like minimize your sleep. That's something that I aim to do. You know, like like I, I also uh, I don't know. Like we both know Ustad Abdurrahman, for example. I know Ustad Abdurrahman. He sleeps like five hours, six hours a day, right? Yeah. And and when you get to know more and more kind of uh, students of Islamic sciences, scholars, you realize most of them they sleep five, six hours a day. When you learn that, you 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 can't deny that it's very possible to just sleep five, six hours for the rest of your life. It's not going to damage your health. Of you know, and I, I've I've heard. I mean, I don't think this is confirmed, but apparently the Prophet ﷺ, his uh, sleeping pattern was something like um, he he would sleep after Isha, and then wake yeah. up before Fajr. Uh, yeah. Before Fajr, he get up, he'll pray the night prayer. Then apparently he would have a power nap before Fajr. He'd have a short sleep before Fajr. Hmm. Then. He'd be up Fajr till uh, Dhuhr, and then Dhuhr we know he'd, he'll do the Qaylula, yeah? Mm. So, so obviously he's not sleeping eight hours or whatever they recommend you to sleep. So that's just one kind of thing that, for example, I get from Imam al nawawi we get from the Prophet ﷺ, we get from our scholars, is that it's not about knowledge, yeah? it's not about memorizing 10,000 hadith, it's just, uh, you know, time is scarce, time is the most precious resource, and so you got to really... Um, yeah, that is, you're right. Yeah. Guard it, that is you know? the biggest thing, isn't it? The biggest, I think the biggest thing that you take from any role model is their usage of time. Yeah. Even and, if it's, yeah. even if, sorry, even if you're thinking in terms of business and in terms of, you know, the, a millionaire giving you a speech on how he became a millionaire mm -hmm. and he'll tell you like, oh, I gave everything. I remember one hearing someone, this motivational speaker, it's very famous, but he said something like, "Oh, if you don't want to, if you want to breathe, if you want to succeed as much as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful," kind of thing. Yeah. And like, oh, you have to sacrifice X, Y, Z. You have to sacrifice all your hobbies, all this. This is what I did to get yeah. to where I am. Blah blah blah. Yeah. So that's my man, E. T. Is it? E. T. Man. <laughs> e. T. I don't know all these people. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, exactly. It's true. You get that from from. Th there are certain traits like that everyone that did anything in their life will will have. I think. Um, so that's pretty much like what I grew up with is these kind of standard role models. Um, I don't know if I got any of the, any of these kind of pop culture role models. Like for example, I I was quite exposed to the football world, but I didn't really want to be like them per se. Really, I didn't yeah. really see much in them. Yeah, um, me too. Um, the the hip hop world d did interest me, and I do. There are many things that I could say I learned from rappers and stuff. Uh, I don't know, creative wise or marketing wise or business wise, that mm. you know it's useful. It's useful stuff. But until really, like most of my and, and you, most of your influences are gonna be baked into you by the age of around. Uh, 12 ish you know I mean oh, that's really? when that's when you get your values then of course mm. during your that's why a lot of people what will happen is they could be raised really well but when they hit the teenage years they go off off track yeah but a yeah. lot of the time around like 20 or 25 ish they come back to where they began yeah because it's yeah, it's like baked right. into you right unless they go like nuts like some crazy off tray kind of thing but usually people go come back to where they came from so that's why like the first 10 or 12 years is very important mm. um so so yeah i mean like for me like um so growing up i had a lot of clashes with my dad because i think the first reason is because we're so far apart in age like he's much older and he's, you know, essentially from a different time, you know, and I always, uh, he's not, maybe he, 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 he doesn't know how to talk to me. And in turn, I didn't know how to talk to him. So we can't really express us, our opinions or our views very well to each other. Um, and now he, he, he doesn't really live here as much as he does in Tunisia because of the responsibilities he has over there. Right. But I will tell you that even though like I've already had a, uh, I've already had my, my son for four months as soon as I had my son that was the day I understood my dad mm, my you know dad. like I, I went through you know 24 year 23 years because yeah 23 years more or less not really getting why he is the way he is and where he's coming from and as I got a bit older I sort of because as the only son of my household I know and I always knew that the responsibilities he has will one day be passed to me and I have no choice in that, you yeah. know, just because of the nature of the culture and the nature of the responsibilities he has. And I was always against it. And I was always like, why me? Really? You know, okay. Oh, yeah. I was like, why me? Why can't I make my own choices in life? You know, why mm. have I been lumped with his, you know, his sort of, I don't know, his baggage, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and I was so anti, anti, anti. And then when I started practicing, I became a much more of a family man. Mm. I became much more like I turned my, my head away from from my social sphere and towards my family. I would spend less time in my room and more time in the living room with everyone. Right. You know? So so you embraced the responsibility more? Yeah, I would definitely. And then I thought I accepted the responsibility and I was also happy to. And I was also happy to take on take on the you know bear the struggles of the family you know right yeah, yeah. i was very happy to and i you know I'd, I'd like to think i i help my mother more i'd like to think i help my father more, my family more not to say we didn't clash on other things but i would my perspective changed based on that and like i said so now now that i'm a father and even though yeah i still disagree with my dad on some things which is normal yeah but never 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 would i be able to disrespect him because if i look at the way he lived his life he literally sacrificed a lot just for us he sacrificed essentially his whole life for his family the reason it seems why he to me like to me bro that your dad was a big role model for you even maybe you didn't realize it right yeah i don't think i realized it until recently because yeah. because now you're in like when you said you said when you became practicing how mm. you started emulating him you're like okay my dad uh, was taking care of of everyone, and yeah. like like I uh, you always knew that that's kind of passed on to you, right? Yeah. But you just weren't acting on it. But you knew yeah. when you became more kind of serious about life, if you like, yeah, yeah. you knew that that's my thing. I'm gonna do that. So yeah, you you're just you were copying your dad then. Yeah, and I think a lot of it as well. Like as you grow, family members sometimes say some like things to you, like "Oh, you're just like your dad," or 
oh, that like certain characteristics of your father comes out in you. Yeah, like, these little comments, I think they little play a things. role. Yeah, these little things. Like I remember I got into a little bit of an argument with a family member and they said, they said something like, oh, you're just like your dad. And originally <laughs> I was really offended. Right. But then I was like, wait, why? Like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, fine. I am my dad's son. Mm. And, and what do you know yeah, what I mean yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so and I you know I, I, I really sort of mm. uh, that actually that. you know what astaghfirullah I never mentioned like probably my biggest role model has always been my dad um, in terms of like what kind of what you're saying there, like sacrifice responsibility um, th like basically I don't know I just think like that's how any decent man is anyway like he just like his like pretty much his purpose is life in life is to look after his family you know whether that means sacrificing or not like that's the main thing like without that there's like not much point in life you know mm. so um i grew up with very uh, strong um, sense of that definitely and uh, i'm pretty similar to you basically like i knew that's like my thing as well and uh yeah i, I, I don't want to take that out of this conversation because my dad definitely was a big role model and then those other people i mentioned they're secondary i suppose do you do you have brothers? Yeah, I have one younger brother. So okay, that, that actually works in your favor as well. Because I was yeah. going to say, I've seen a lot of families where there are a lot of boys. Mm. The 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 responsibility is often diffused. Right, especially Spread when, between them. Yeah, especially if this a it's a family that has a culture of the son has to inherit the father's responsibility. Yeah, a lot of some brothers might pull out of that as, as quick as they can because they don't want that whilst like maybe the eldest will remain the eldest will be the one to take it on yeah i mean i think understand. it's always going to happen uh if there's yeah. more than one i reckon because yeah. you know just how it is really yeah um but i suppose you're right yeah like the younger one might get away with more etc so um i wanted to ask you a question go on you talked about business people uh what's his name et uh etc how do you think how do you think of muslims having non-muslim role models because wallah the reason i'm bringing this up is because uh i've seen online quite a bit people saying it's kind of like what you're saying before about th get, getting rid of like your whole uh, personality throwing it down oh, the drain yeah. a lot of people yeah. they're like they're like oh i'm muslim now or like oh i'm practicing now and my only role model is the Prophet Salam, and no one else, right? So what do you think? Um, I think when you come into the religion with that mindset, then you lose out on a lot of uh, creativity, essentially. And I'm not saying this, I want to say this, but I don't want to say it as like a fatwa or as a piece of Islamic knowledge because I will no doubt need to be corrected. But from my understanding, like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like in the Battle of the Trench, didn't, wasn't that whole idea of the trench borrowed from the Romans? Um, I believe uh, it was Salman al-Farsi. Salman al-Farsi yeah. knew he, it of it from the Romans. Uh, well, he's from, yeah, I don't know. He's from Persia, so maybe he got it mm. from Persia or maybe Romans, I'm not sure. Allahu alam. All I know is that that, that actual battle tactic wasn't from Yeah, definitely. From yeah. So that was a, you know, that was a borrowed thing. Yeah. That was an inspired. It was an outside inspired. It wasn't, you know, and yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with, like when we were, when when the but Muslim. Sal but Salman al Farsi, he was a Muslim, right? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, yeah. He oh, you're without, saying, but you're saying he got it from the Romans, and they're not Muslim. Yeah, that's yeah. my that is my my point is yeah. yeah. Like if a good idea comes from someone else. Yes. There's nothing wrong with taking it. Yes. You know, and people come up with ideas all the time. Yeah. So I don't I don't like the idea that we as Muslims, we are copy paste Muslims in the sense of our creativity and our ambition. Like when I said earlier, like when people start practicing, they might strip their whole culture. You don't have to. You follow the Quran and Sunnah mm -hmm. and people are from everywhere. People are from all over. Muslims are from all over the world. You know, a Muslim in Antarctica shouldn't be expected to you know what's the word have have uh, you know lived, uh, lived life the exact same way as yeah lived life the same way like having couscous and, and mixed grills and do you yeah. understand yeah, yeah. For, you know what I mean? for, for by the way the, by the way bro <laughs> no one no one lives in antarctica they're not allowed 
it was the other one, wasn't it? It was uh, Arctic, uh, is it? Arctic. Yeah. Okay. No, I thought it was the other way. Word. I don't know, bro. No, Antarctica. Geography. Definitely, no one is allowed there. Um, I might as well tell this story. Yeah. <laughs> okay, go on. <laughs> so the reason I know no one's allowed in Antarctica is because my friend was telling me about flat Earth theory, oh, and um, people that believe the Earth is flat. Uh, you ask them, okay, what happens when you get to the edge? And they say Antarctica is the edge. Like the Antarctica is around the four sides of the flat earth. Okay. And so then you say, okay, so what happens when you get to Antarctica? And then they say, no one's allowed there. So that's why we don't know. Right. And they say, oh, it's being hidden. Whatever is beyond the edge of the earth. So anyway, that's just a side point. <laughs> wow. So, you, so yeah, no, basically no one's allowed in Antarctica. We've just lost a hundred listeners now because you've said something controversial. I mean, that's not controversial. Think, it's, it's a load of rubbish, probably. But you know, what you're calling the flower of theory rubbish? Probably. I don't know. I'm open minded, <sighs> Allah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's probably rubbish, but you know, I could be wrong. Well, it's very controversial. I don't remember what we were talking about before that point. Uh, we sorry, you, you were saying that uh, if someone lives in Antarctica, they're not going to live life, even though they're following Quran and Sunnah, they're not yeah. going to live life like someone else. Yeah, I mean, like when I was doing Pure XI, every, all the Muslims were doing very basic things. They you were mean doing, in terms of design? In terms of creativity yeah, and yeah, design yeah, and yeah. artwork. And <clears throat> the artwork that we produce is so boring. Mm. Like it really, it's all copy paste. Like this, I want to do this, so... The other guy's doing this, and the other guy's doing this, and smile, it's Sunday t-shirts. That's all we get. Like, essentially, <laughs> that, that is it. And why? Why? You can do better than that. Like, what's stopping you? And when, you know, anyway, so, but now, I do believe now I'm seeing a wave of really creative Muslims that are, like I said, navigating between that, navigating within the halal. Yeah. And whatever is associated with non-Muslims, mm. you pick and choose what to inspire you from there yeah. and make it your own you know yeah and definitely. don't 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 compromise on your religion yeah. by doing so and know? just just to add to the the point you mentioned about uh the the trench uh strategy um yeah. so i i believe it was it was that instance where uh no that was it yeah that was it they they were preparing the muslims were preparing for the enemy to come and attack uh, Medina, right? Um, yeah. And now, in preparation, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was, he was like sorting out the strategy, right? How, how they're going to defend and everything. Then, the, I think it was, it must have been Salman, radiallahu anhu, he asked the Prophet, he said, is this the strategy you're using? Is it like wahi, like is it from Allah? Or is it just like you're, you're thinking of how to do it yourself? And he's like, no, I'm thinking of how to do it myself. And then, then Salman, he offered his solution or his uh, tactical mm. strategy, right? Mm. And uh, also, I've heard there's another, there's another hadith where the Prophet ﷺ, he said, um, um, uh, Antum a you, you know more about your dunya affairs than me. In your mm. dunya, you know more than me, right? Yeah. Um, obviously, there are probably exceptions to that in terms of, I don't know, for example, drinking, sitting down. We don't know it's good for us before but turns out maybe it is good for you health wise right so yeah, that, is, yeah. that is a dunya thing but obviously we we sit down to drink because the prophet ﷺ did it not really the secondary intention would be for the health benefits um so yeah so you're yeah 100 percent well and uh, you know it's not a fatwa but i've heard this countless times from people who do know uh, what they're talking about that you know as long as it's within the realms of the halal and you know and it's it's within not just the the halal i would say but within the um what's the word the i'm thinking of french words now man like the behavior or the the way of acting of the muslims then yeah, go for it like go that's for the it. thing i mean we're not i don't want anyone to misunderstand us when it comes to worship and religion we're not saying you know yeah don't that. be like buddhist and like i don't know yeah, we're not saying like oh we don't want to pray five times a day anymore. We want to kneel down on our knees and yeah, yeah, you know, elbows on the bed. And, yeah, I don't think anyone's it. thinking that to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, inshallah. Allah alam, Allah alam. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I just don't. I don't want people to take something and run with it. Yeah, yeah. I think that there's a concept that I've got in my head of like a holistic role model and then a kind of cherry pick role model. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the Prophet Isa Salam 
we're going to like copy him in in how his character was yeah not little yeah. tactics here and there not life hacks yeah but we're going to copy his character his worship his interactions with human beings right yeah that's what i would call a holistic role model and then you've got other people like the companions i like the great scholars of the past yeah and the uh, and even current current day great scholars yeah we, those people that um we can take their general etiquette as like that's the role model yeah but then like you're saying like there's flipping there are uh, i don't know billionaire investors you want to invest go learn from those guys right of like course. the sahaba were you know they weren't around in the in, in silicon valley and stuff so they're not going to help you with that of um, course, yeah. obviously then, this is the thing bro when you combine the two when you combine the etiquettes and the and the mindset and the way of thinking of of the the companions of the prophet sallam and then you you go to mr billionaire to invest yeah you're going to come you're going to filter and you're going to know okay like his business sounds sick but actually i'm not i'm not comfortable with it because of this that i learned about the prophet you know what i mean yes. so it might still be halal but you know what i mean so I, th I think those two things having those two sides help you a lot I think we we the times that each generation has its holistic Muslims in a sense. So I think now this generation, Wallahu alam, you can you can chime in. I think this generation is the one that is bringing the creativity. So they're at the stage where creativity is coming in. I think maybe next generation, maybe even late this generation, hmm. we will see you know the fruit openly openly practicing muslims become those millionaires and billionaires that you see do you understand yeah. because you know go to one of those motivational talks that we mentioned that you know it could be it could be someone in silicon valley it could be someone and you know he grabs the mic to announce the next you know iphone mm. and you know he starts with bismillah do you yeah. know what i mean i don't know yeah. if we're at that stage yet or you know someone who's visibly like I know I don't want to get into a big discussion about the beard and things like that, but the beard is a is a is a symbol of Islam and a very you know someone yeah, who's no practicing doubt. the Sunnah. You know no we're not yeah. going to deny that. So once once I see a, someone who is a Muslim with the beard in terms of for the reason of following the Sunnah, doing yeah. that you know doing that sort of presentation for a billion billion dollar company, mm. then I'll say okay we've reached this stage now. Yeah, do you understand? And yeah. then I'll say, then I'll say, well, I'll get, uh, I'll make him my role model. Yeah, because right now yeah. the reason why I'd say, yeah, fair enough, we have to take role models from non-Muslims when it comes to creativity in business is because we don't really have too many from our own community. Right. You right. Know? But but now, like I said about this generation, I do believe that this generation, when it comes to creativity, I get inspired by a lot of Muslims now because Muslims are being a lot more creative without and i'm talking about the ones that aren't compromising their religion yeah i get you yeah so yeah. so actually it doesn't matter if they're muslim or not muslim as long as they're great at what the, what are that of one course. thing that you're looking for um, but it inspires me more when they are muslim yeah obviously because you relate because, to them more that's exactly. normal that's exactly, normal yeah. yeah yeah so um by the way i just remembered the the other hadith um prophet Sallam, he said obviously this is a translation he said uh, wisdom is the lost property of the believer he takes it wherever he finds it um and that's pretty that's pretty deep actually because it's actually it's it's already your property is it the lost property yeah. of the believer um and so i i just remember that from uh, that mufti video we were talking about the other day um yeah. and he mentioned that because he mentioned a quote from i think it was an american author um so yeah man so i think we we kind of covered that and i think it's pretty clear and the best thing, though, is that you don't go all in on one more than the other. You know, if, if you're following X, Y, Z person who's not Muslim, but he's excellent at whatever it is. Um, mm. And then you don't know anything about the Sunnah. You're probably going to trip up because you're going to start implementing characteristics of that guy who is, is not following the Quran and Sunnah. Right? And, and personally, like. I would, I'd like to say that it depends on what you want in life in terms of your dunya because I would say that you're more business business minded than I am like yeah. as far as entrepreneurship I don't put myself in that category so personally I don't actually listen to those those people you yeah know? like people course. that are business you know you know people like Silicon Valley things like that I, I, I understand why people would listen to that I don't personally because 
I, I'm not down that path at the moment. I don't need to be. Yeah. So to say that everybody needs to borrow from you know non-Muslims is it, it depends what they want. Like maybe if someone's studying you know religion in in Medina, they don't need anyone but the the, the scholars that are at their you know that they're, they're mm. with. I don't know right. about that though. Well, it depends. I, I disagree want, because because I think scholars of the past, yeah, especially they were polymaths, right? Mm. So they knew a ton of stuff about the world in general, right? And that's why they were mm. so sick with with the conclusions they came to is because mm. they knew about history, right? And they knew about uh, fiqh, right? And that's why they come with the sick fatwa, that's creative fatwa, because they know how societies work, they know how other societies work, they know how history work, like what happened in the past, and that brings it all together. So likewise, um, something like psychology, right? And also yeah. public speaking skills, I do think, I think, People uh, studying in Medina, let's say you're doing a gra like a, what's it called undergrad in Medina. Yeah? yeah, you should learn public speaking. You should learn teaching skills. Right. And you should learn some basic psychology and kind of uh, persuasion or behavior change, uh, behavioral psychology, you know, because these things are going to make you it's like, like if you're at 50 percent of your efficiency in in teaching once you've graduated this is going to take you to that 80 percent point mm. right and in uh, in medina they don't do that so much right it's probably part of the culture whatever how it ended up yeah but i know in mauritania they do dive into those things they do study for example logic they study logic they study philosophy they study um what's it called public speaking right and they study arabic in terms of how to give a sick speech yeah not just be understood not just be grammatically correct, but how do you give yeah. a sick speech? So I do think, uh, and, and those, like, wherever you learn these skills, it could be from a Muslim or non-Muslim, but the point is, I don't think you're ever going to be like, oh, I'm just going to study Islamic studies. Like, but I think in, in Islamic studies, that, that arena of knowledge exists already. Like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, but it's just neglected, perhaps. Maybe it's just neglected. neglected. I yeah. think, well, it, it, a lot of it is assumed knowledge, I suppose, isn't it? Like, I suppose public speaking, like to speak in a public audience doesn't mm. um, bother me too much. Like I'm fine doing it, and I don't feel like I don't feel because I guess I don't feel nervous doing it. Then I don't feel like I need the education. Well, why? But then again, I did study psychology for three years, so maybe part of it was in it. Like I did learn a lot from psychology, and I did. But right. the thing is, I think we're getting things. I think what we've done here is we've stepped maybe too too far in the sense that we've said we're talking about role models yeah. but when we're taking from people it doesn't mean that they're all, that are role models does it you know yeah, i think a role model comes with the baggage of this person i aspire to be them right yeah i suppose yeah. i mean i aspire to be like certain uh businessmen in my business life if you know what i you, mean yeah right but like you would say wouldn't you say i aspire to to reach a level that they have not to be <clears throat> Yeah, I don't want to like, be yeah. them. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 that's for yeah. sure. And what I always get that, you know, because I'll listen to someone like one like Tim Ferriss podcast. Yeah, is a very popular podcast. Um, and I did a book review of his book, and his book influenced me a lot. Okay, but sometimes I'm just listening to this guy talking about certain beliefs he has, and I'm just like, this guy is lost. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like yeah. so. So there's always that that part of things which will come in there but that's not a problem really yeah. um i think it takes someone to be very well ground like if you're a practicing muslim who wants to practice your religion then you have to be very grounded in your knowledge yeah and know you know before you go into an arena like that because everything <laughs> and the bottom line is and i'm not trying to say this in a bad way but a non-muslim's life is laced in in sin often or often so you have to what you take from them you have to navigate of like course. even if it's if it's art like when i was doing pure xi the art that people would produce is a lot of it is art that i can't produce myself not because i haven't got the skill but because i don't want to involve myself in the the you know the the, the baggage of sin that might come with art in terms of certain things that people draw or certain things that you know that mm. have been photos are taken of or certain ways of marketing and presenting a product or mm. do you understand things like that so you just got to pick and choose and know how to navigate and the bottom line is 
as we travel through this world, then navigating between the halal and haram is one of the biggest challenges. So if someone can learn to be grounded and really know, you know, how to navigate themselves around these this material, yeah. then they'll do well, inshallah. Yeah, no doubt. And I think the thing is, bro, some people, they're going to say, no, I'm not going to take from none of these artists to improve my uh, creativity or whatever, right? They're going to be like, no, it's too risky. And that's fine. Like, you're welcome to do that. But someone always has to have that kind of courage or whatever it is to get in there and navigate it. And when they come out the other side, inshallah, then they're going to be that person who can show the Muslims how to do it in a halal way, right? Yeah. But if nobody does that, then it's going to be forever saying, oh, I'm not risking it, I'm not risking it. So anyway, it's up to you to decide what you're comfortable with, what you think yeah. is too risky and what isn't. Bro, just before we get on to the Q&A part, which is the end, yeah. um, I wanted to talk about um, social media influencers and them as role models, because obviously, like, I just can't, <laughs> can't uh, escape this topic, you know? Yeah. Um, I think Saraha, I'm, I'm quite surprised sometimes because I feel like, okay, this is a real story. I, I had that Ask FM thing, uh, anonymous question app or whatever, yeah? And mm -hmm. this guy asked me a question and he's like, I'm 30 or something like that. He's like yeah. many, this was a while ago as well. So he's like, I don't know, he must have been at least five years older than me. And he's yeah. asking me for advice. And I just, I just thought, yo, like you should be giving me advice, you know. And yeah. I, I don't know, man. I was like, at, when that, I remember when that came, I was like, wow, like this is messed up. Like, why are people, why do people want my advice? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> is that cool. like I understand? Okay, if you're if you're quite a bit younger than me, or if there is something that, like, okay, I'm very interested in psychology and changing your behavior in in mindset. So if you ask me questions about that, because I read about it and stuff, that makes sense. Okay. But this guy was asking me, I think it was like a parenting question. And so I just, I was a bit ashamed that he was asking me, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So how do these social media influencers, whatever they, they want to be called as, how must it be for them, you know? Mm, gosh, I mean... <laughs> it depends, doesn't it? I mean, when it comes to like, so we're talking about Muslims. Is that, is I don't that know, a, bro. Because I in the end, yeah, look, you and I, we're Muslims, yeah? Mm. We, we're going to consume media from Muslims and non-Muslims, so we're going to be influenced by them both, yeah? Well, I was thinking, like, when I grew up, I didn't have what these kids, what kids have today mm. in terms of, like, just, just, like, I was looking on YouTube recently at, like, um, like the trending videos and yeah. there are very popular famous you know million subscriber youtubers who are like what like they have fans all over the all over the globe like i was walking to work and that one of them is doing a book signing in like the wh smith near near work and i just thought what are the kids what are what do the kids see in these guys what is yeah. it about them that makes them is yeah. it just purely entertainment? Is it a celebrity thing? Has a celebrity culture, and like I can't remember what writer said this, but it's, he he predicted that in the future, you know, everybody will be chasing their thirty seconds of fame. Like that is basically what what's happening today. Like essentially, people get thirty seconds of fame, and I'm not talking about celebrities who are manufactured in a sense because, you know, the the the, the media manufactures them. But I'm talking about anybody. Like yeah, I could point a camera at my face. And within a week, I could be a role model for someone, or I could be, I could collect fans, you know? <laughs> it's nuts, it's nuts. Yeah, yeah, so anybody, anybody could be that. So as far as what do they see in them, I have to ask, what do I see in some of mine? I think personally, I've just escaped that mind mindset that I never got caught by that. So I'm not a fan of uh, Muslim uh influences the same way that a younger teenage muslim might be yeah you understand like yeah. i respect them i i like some of their work i like what they do but i'm not like in the comments for every video i'm not you know i rush to your defense if someone disses you i'm they understand what i mean like i'm not obsessive in the way that maybe some people are yeah and 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 i think that a lot of that comes with age i think a lot of that comes with maybe yeah we live in a generation where 
celebrity culture is so heightened that when it comes to a celebrity that is Muslim or a day or a vlogger or a whatever you, you know, an artist, whatever it is, I think because you've got a combination of I identify with him because he's Muslim and he's saying Assalamu Alaikum and I'm saying Wa Alaikum Assalam, then that heightens the, the affinity. love and yeah, the affinity, the love and the attachment I have with them. You know, and you know what? If they're going to do it with anyone, then do it with a Muslim, you know, because fair enough, you identify with them and maybe you can benefit. But as far as how the actual influencer feels, it's difficult because it, you know I got a taste of that kind of life very briefly, mm. and um, I didn't. I, it started to seep into my personal life, and I didn't like it. You know. Yeah. Actually, I remember once I was at work, and uh, I tweeted about. Um, I tweeted that I was hungry, and I like oh I'm, I'm well in the mood for biryani or something. Because I just discovered the pleasures and then the amazement of biryani. So, okay. Yeah, and I and then maybe an hour later or something, a colleague of mine comes up because I work upstairs. A colleague of mine comes up with a bag and says, "Oh, um, this is for you." I opened it up and it was two containers of biryani bought from the local deli. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I was like, "Who? What?" I thought maybe my family had come and given me something. Yeah. I was like, oh, who gave you this? And she, and she was like, oh, just two people. And I was like, what do you mean? I don't know these people. And I went downstairs to see who it was, and they'd already left. Boy, that's very scary. Yeah. Did you eat and it? I, no, bro. Yeah, like, it might be poisoned. Yeah, and then I found out, <laughs> and I had, I had what's it? I had Ask FM at the time, and someone wrote on there that it was them. Oh. And I was just like, yo, like, I don't like this, bro. And, <laughs> yeah, that would definitely scare me. Yeah, but it could be anything. Like, and then, you know, when you live in a world of, like, where seher is real, you know, and, and magic is real and oh, stuff, yeah. like, I just get scared, bro. So, and then, oh, you know, not just that, but then it's, there's more controversial things that seep into your personal life. Like, and yeah. you see it, you see, you see either you choose, like Muslims or non-Muslims, you see this lifestyle destroying them mm. because they're too open and everything's on display and everything must be shown. Yeah, you know? and I think a lot of it comes from sharing yourself and becoming an 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 a uh, what's the word a item of dis of attraction. You know, yeah, it really comes from being allowing people to become attracted to you and your lifestyle. Mm. Obviously, allowing... it starts innocently. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I think you know what it is, bro. Maybe the reason that you and I are not really into following these kind of people or whatever. Is because we do have role models, like like, like I told you about Imam and Noe, right? Mm. Some of the mad things he did. I'll tell you one more thing, yeah. Yeah. Imam and Noe, he died very young when he was forty-five. Okay, Rahimahullah. Okay, if if you look at all the books he wrote in his short life, on average he would have written forty pages a day. Yeah, yeah that's that's, it, that's if he was writing from the age of 18 but I doubt he was because he just started his studies at 18 okay so he wrote more than 40 pages a day right when you know that about someone and you look up to someone like that and you take them as a role model right and then you see you know whatever Abdullah on on Instagram uh, doing a flipping backflip you know how impressed are you going to be you know or singing <laughs> singing a nasheed or you know what I mean like you just you just, you just can't be impressed but yeah, if you don't think, know yeah. about the, the great feats of some people, then yeah, maybe you would find it impressive that so-and-so, oh, he made me laugh. Oh, uh, I don't know, he's got a great singing voice or he's got a great even recitation voice. Maybe that would be enough to, to make you feel like, I want to be like him. Mm. You know? I think as well, like, for, uh, to be honest, yeah, I think me and you, the reason as well we can't do, deal with that is because a lot of... Uh, you know, the majority of Muslims that are in tune with social media see influencers as role models because they've never met them and they've never been in a position to meet them. I've met a lot of these people and so have you. And I've worked with a lot of these people and so have you, you mm. know? And when you've met, when you cross the line and you've met them and you're jamming with them and you're, you know, then they you just become another. Yeah, no, not, not, I, well, maybe you are, but I just, I'd say they just become another person on my contact list. Yeah. Suppose. You know, Oy. and Ahi tweet with the fancy contact oh, list. Subhanallah, <laughs> you're putting me in trouble. <laughs> no man, but you understand what I mean. Like, 
that I'm beyond that now, and and also combine that with age, and you're you're older than me, Ak, I believe. Mm. So, so you, you know, we're we're not at that anymore. But there are, yes, there's you know a lot of people that get starstruck. Yeah, you know? yeah. But the thing is, bro, it doesn't matter if I'm old or young. When I was younger, I still did not. I still was not easily impressed by these kind of people. Like I told you, yeah, I did watch yeah. football, okay? I watched yeah. football when I was maybe 16, 17, these kind of age, yeah? yeah. I, I didn't want to be a footballer. Like I didn't want to be them. I didn't want their fame. I didn't really want yeah. their money, yeah? I wasn't impressed. Probably, this is my guess, yeah? Probably because I knew of much greater people than them. I'm not saying yeah. they're, they're terrible people, but I'm saying... The, the, you know, it's not the same, yeah? Someone who, like, I don't know, Neymar, yeah? The, the, the most expensive transfer in, yeah. ever, yeah? Neymar versus flipping, I don't know, literally is very easy to find someone, yeah? Even, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a specific guy's name. I, I have to censor myself. Um, <laughs> let, like, okay, Malcolm X, khalas. he's not even that long dead, yeah? Rahimahullah. Yeah. Okay, um, Ma Malcolm X, yeah, versus Neymar. Like, it, like, khalas, there's no competition. Like, Malcolm X changed the world in a significant way, or ch at least changed America in a significant yeah. way. Yeah. Neymar... Are are intellectual, intellectual role models. Yeah, but, but I think deep down, everyone's got this thing built into them. They know what to look up to and what not to look up to. They know, yeah. somehow they know inside that entertaining people is not too hard. Yeah? yeah, or, or um, I don't know why. Yeah, but even football skills—they are rare. It's, it's true. Being sick at football is a rare skill. Yeah, but maybe people know deep down it's not bringing the world as much value as X, Y, Z other skill. I'm not sure, Wallah. Mm. But this is this is what this is what, what I'm trying to say. The crux of the matter, I think, is maybe kids are not raised looking up to certain people and so they find it very easily to easy to be impressed by people with very little skills and that, that's no disrespect to these influencer guys that like maybe they've got maybe they got skills yeah so be it you know Allah um, barak but like myself yeah or people people ask me questions I answer based on what I know sometimes and you know they're happy with the answer and they say oh you know this and you know that but like I've always got someone way above me where i'm just like come on i didn't do anything yeah oh, man. that kind of uh it grounds the person who's who's known and it grounds the people that are following them when they've got people so high like looking up yeah, you know yeah, like yeah. you get neck ache <laughs> <laughs> subhanallah I mean, what a deep deep thing you've, you've thrown on me today man you made me think about everybody in my life who I look to, who I contact with. But let's uh, let's wrap that topic up for now. Yeah. Oh, we are at one hour and seven minutes. We're pushing it. All yeah. right. Yeah. Maybe we'll have time for half a question. <laughs> okay. Because I've got a question in front of me here. It's question here, not suggestions. No, this is a question. Although, okay, okay I'll, I'll, I'll let everybody know first that you can send in suggestions, questions, whatever you want discussed. Uh, to mindheistpodcast at gmail.com uh, and we will depending on what we're doing and what the plan is each week we will see if we can dedicate as much time or as little time to it as we possibly can yes um, there's a brother here he's asked a two part question I personally don't want to do the first part can because... you just read it and we'll decide okay he says hi Aki Tweet his name's Tariq he said hi Aki Tweet uh, thank you for your amazing podcast channel. The first episode was really good. Barakallahu fikum. Oh, see, that's nice, man. Thank we've got you. some. On a side note, we've got some really great feedback and great success. First yeah. episode is really yeah. Well Jazakumullah khairan for three hundred yeah. downloads. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to tell everybody what the numbers were. Thanks, Amin. Yeah. I was going to say three thousand, but you know, fair enough. <laughs> no, we're, we're not like we're not influencers yet, bro. When we become influencers, then we hide the numbers and we pretend we got 100,000. <laughs> okay, then let's carry on. I want to ask you if you could discuss the halal online marriage process as it has become popular nowadays. See, this, this is why I didn't want to go down this right. road. Yeah, no, that's fair <laughs> enough, though. Like, we'll yeah. just do a whole episode about that instead. Yeah. 
Uh, if two people like each other online and are compatible, what would be the perfect way to proceed further and how can they bring it up to their families? Some families are very traditional and strict, so telling them it started online might not be the best news to bring out. What do you guys think? Should we avoid meeting people online? Is real life interaction a better way? I would love to hear your thoughts. And then the second thing he says, I'm interested in hearing your views on advising elders. How do you think it could be done? Many parents have an ego problem and just can't accept advice from their children. Your thoughts on this is much appreciated. Sorry my English isn't so good. Barakallahu feekum and may Allah bless you both. Yeah, Barakallahu feek. So the whole marriage thing, number one, I will say that it's a big topic. It's something that everyone asks me about. Uh, and I might just save it for just an entire episode. Let's do that, inshallah. Inshallah. So maybe Tariq, if you're listening, I don't know if your name what you wanted your name out, but I suppose your name is. I'm just saying your first name, so it could be any Tariq. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll dedicate an episode to that. As far as your second part of the question, I think it can sort of link into what we've spoken about today in terms of role models. Like we were talking about par- uh, our fathers and how to speak to them and advise them and mm. like them as role models. Um, and I think <laughs> what I'd like to start saying. Uh, as briefly as possible is establish a connection with that elder based on what you admire about them you know establish a link and a relationship based on you know oh he's a family man and I really respect that or he's good to his you know he's he's dedicated to his kids and I really respect that or you know the way he makes money that's really impressive I respect that or his manners I re- to understand whatever that is and ask them about that or ask them for advice first if you sincerely ask someone for advice and you develop that relationship then you can actually advise them through questions do you understand you could say to like i could say to my dad um oh like i don't know maybe there's a is this halal or is this haram like ask him maybe he never thought of it what advising his elders yeah, like for example, your dad's gonna take a mortgage, and he hasn't even thought about it twice. So it's halal or haram. They mm. could ask him. Like, do you think like is it halal? Yeah. Like, you don't even know, you know? Yeah, yeah. It depends, obviously, on the parent. What they are they a practicing Muslim or are they not, or are they do they have knowledge of Islam or not? That's just know? an example. It's just an example. Of course. Like, yeah, but you're right. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, yeah. what what's a non kind of another example? Continue, bro. Sorry, I interrupted. Yeah, you could just say, you know, you could say like, you know, do you think there's a better way of doing this in terms of get involved in whatever the issue is in terms of if it's a decision that someone's made, like if my dad has made a purchase of something or if it's a business thing, I'll ask him, oh, was there a better way? Is there a better thing that we could have done instead? Like ask him, have the conversation with him, um, discuss it with him, basically partner up. Don't be the kid anymore. Be the be a partner and like you have to sort of man up mm. do you know mm. what i mean you have to stop positioning yourself as a child and be more of a man be more of a you know be more mature yourself because once once that notion of maturity is detected from your elders then you start you know when 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 the parents say okay all the kids get out because we have to have a conversation about something you stay in the room because you're the elder as well yeah you know you become part of the conversation. Like I remember it was after I started practicing that I started staying in the room, so to speak. It was, and that's when like my opinion would often get heard. My opinion now gets heard because yeah, I suppose I'm a husband and a father and, mm. and I'm, I'm considered an adult. So naturally it depends what you want. I'm, I'm assuming he's advising, he's talking about advising them in terms of Dean. And I, I believe that if there's friction in terms of Dean, you will not reach anyone like that unless you develop a relationship based on respect and love beforehand you know yeah, yeah, i didn't reach agree. when when i started practicing and i wanted to advise my dad and i came at it from a harsh way and a an angry way and all of that because i didn't have a remember what i said earlier i didn't have a good relationship with my dad growing up because we we clashed so much right so when it came to me oh i'm practicing now i'm gonna go tell my dad what to do of course he's not gonna listen to me <laughs> no way yeah, because now he just thinks I'm on on another wave, another flex, something else that he's not up on. Yeah. Do you understand? When I was, you know, in a rock band doing rock music, he didn't. He thought that was stupid. And then when I started practicing 
and telling him what's halal haram, he thought yeah. maybe I'm doing something stupid again. Yeah, yeah. You know? But no, I, I, when I realized that was my issue, and I actually tried to connect with my dad, who he is, I was like, I wanted to ask his opinion on things. I wanted to ask what the decisions he made in his life, get to know him as a person. Then sometimes on a long drive somewhere, when it's just me and him, he would bring up the Dean issue. He'd bring up the conversation about Dean because mm -hmm. he wants to now relate to me because he enjoyed his time with me. So he wants to talk to me about issues that I'm interested in. So make it so that, and I'll just conclude with this, make it so that this elder enjoys their time with you. And it's not just every conversation is a, is a, a you know, admonishment or advising or this and that. Build that relationship. Take them out for a meal. You know, whatever they're interested in, involve yourself in that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all I can say about that. I don't know what you have to add. Yeah, you know, I would agree 100%. I'll just uh, summarize it in 90% of the, uh, whatever the solution is come to before you even give the advice. And 90% yeah, yeah, was already done. Yeah. Ask, like giving the advice, whether it's with a question, whether it's direct, whatever, 90% is already done based on your relationship. Right. Yeah. Um, and then just because we don't have too much time, honestly, it's not just a plug. If you go to Sarah Master's YouTube channel, S double -E, e R A, yeah, Sarah spent, spelled like that, Sarah Master's, um, I got maybe three, four videos about Dawa, honestly, about advising and about Dawa. And a lot of it is like based on stuff I've read from like persuasion and marketing and stuff. So I think that is ultimately a good advice. And I won't be able to summarize all that stuff in, in it's just better to direct you there. But what uh, Muhammad said, 100% it's all about the relationship. And one more thing is, sometimes it'll take 10 years for people to change after you yeah. give them advice. Like, you know, some, you just got to accept it. In the end, yeah, people change because of Allah, not because of you. And you know, it's it's not your, like, how do I say it? It's not in your control entirely, it, is it? Yeah, it's not your control. Also, it's not your business in a way. It's like, you, why are you giving advice? Yeah, why is it? It's because, is it because you want to change someone? Yeah, you want to control that person, right? Or is it because Allah told you you should give advice and because you care about this person? right mm. why is it you're doing it if your intention is correct you're going to be um you're going to develop the relationship you're going to be patient and you're going to do it in a nice way and then once you've done that it's like there's nothing left to do you just keep doing it and be patient with it mm. Alhamdulillah. good good advice well you plugged your serum masters before we leave if there's any other plugs we have then let's plug them do you have anything else you want to plug what are you working on lately what are you doing lately um, maybe I'll plug stuff later. I just want to say thank you everyone for listening to the first episode. I would appreciate it if you gave this podcast a review uh, because it will help with the rankings. And basically what me and me and Muhammad are thinking is when you search Muslim on uh, the podcast, that hours will come up, inshallah, you know, that'll be inshallah. nice. So if you, if you, in the first like eight weeks, if you review, if we get a lot of reviews, then we might get high in the rankings and that would be nice. So I'd appreciate that. And uh, what else is there to plug? Uh, the email address again, bro. Uh, mindheistpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah. And honestly, uh, what we'll try and do is uh, we'll deal with it one way or another. Whether it's delayed and we do a whole episode about it down the line or whether we answer it here, um, like at the end of each episode, inshallah, yeah. we'll, we'll get to everything. Isn't it? I'll, I'll also say if we do reply to someone's email, then I'll email that person back to let them know that we replied to it in an episode. Uh, also, I mean, you've got, you, you're quite active on your Snapchat. I'm not as much, but I, I see you've got some nice things going on in Snapchat. What is your Snapchat? Snapchat is Sarah Masters again. S double -E -R -A, Masters. Sarah Brilliant. Masters. Master your Sarah. Your Very Sarah. Good. Everyone's got their own Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> MashaAllah. Yeah, I'm uh, Aki Tweet on everything. And uh, you, you just I Google do. him. That's it. That's all you need to do. You'll find him. I am a means role model. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I did want to plug one thing is my wife is raising charity, raising money, sorry, for uh, Muslim hands where they build wells in uh, the most needy areas that Muslims require it. So it could be anywhere in the world. Um, her Just Giving page is... Well, why, why don't you send them to your Twitter? Yeah, they'll find I was it about to say that, yeah. yeah. Her Just Giving page is on my Twitter, so if you just search that. Sadaq uh, Ajaria, really. So if you're part of building a well, then that well could exist way after you die as well, and people will benefit from it. 
uh, inshallah we're you know we're at forty percent right now. So inshallah any every little helps, even if it's a pound. And the best um, charity is water. Is giving people water. Exactly. There's no funny business about it. Like that's just pure clean. Nothing wrong with it. Like do you understand? Like water is water, and mm -hmm. water will benefit even the animals if it if it comes to it. So. Sure. Um, anyway, Jazakallah Khair for listening. That's all we have for this week. And uh, yeah, anything else you want to say, Amin, before we go? Until next time, inshallah. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum.